Future's still in the red, but not by much. David Nicholas joins us now. All right, David, what are you buying today? Anything at all? Uh, you know, sir, I, I, we're going to wait a little bit. Um, okay. We're holding more cash now than we have for a while. From a technical standpoint, just for your viewers, I would love to see the S&P retest that 4,200 level, it, which we're not far from there. If we can retest that, Stuart, and we get a nice healthy bounce, that to me is a time that we're going to be jumping in to try to pick up some names. And we will actively be looking to buy if we retest those Okay, do you think there is a possibility of a strong move up for the market at some point in the near future? You, see, you think that even though we now have $101 a barrel oil, rising interest rates, and inflation that's getting close to 10%, I mean, can, yeah. you, can you can see a solid rally later this year, even though the situation now is so dire? Yeah, there's, there's not a lot of positive right now. But if we look at February, so earlier in February, the market, the S&P jumped 6% in the first couple of days of February. What halted that, Stuart? It wasn't the Federal Reserve. It was Russia. Okay, so the markets right now are trading off of geopolitical events. So I'll tell you in the short term, where does this market head? Has everything to do with what is Putin's next move? The market right now is not trading on the Federal Reserve. It's trading on Russia. So I think Hopefully, as, the, as this de-escalates, would be, the, would be all of our hope, that we're going to see some upside for the markets. But your question about for the end of the year, once we get through midterms, once we have what I call, which will be the greatest summer for travel, probably in American history, as consumers get out and spend over the summertime, that's going to show up in third quarter and fourth quarter earnings. I think we will have a year-end rally where investors are going to want to have capital deployed so they don't miss it. So, I mean, look, the situation in Ukraine and Russia... It's not exactly out of control, but war is raging. Can you, in, in what circumstances could you see an improvement there? I mean, like peace talks or the ceasefire, you would regard that as a buying opportunity? Yeah, so, so the situation, look, I, I think we're signaling to Russia that we don't have the stomach to really hit Putin where it hurts, right? If we're going to still import 500,000 barrels of oil a day, we are single-handedly funding the killing of Ukrainians by buying Russian oil. So, look, I don't know if the, the, the West has the stomach to stop Putin. So I don't think the situation is going to get better in the short term unless we really step up with whether it's arms, whether it's financing, whether it's really sending a mission to Putin to stopping the import of that oil. Obviously, we can find replacements for it. There's ways that we can do it. Uh, but to me, that's going to be, if we really stand up and tell Putin to stop this, that's what I think the markets need to get, let us know that we're serious, and hopefully that'll give some optimism to U.S. markets. Would you expect to hear something like that from the president tonight, State of the Union? I doubt it. I doubt it, because the administration, unfortunately, they don't have a plan for U.S. energy independence. They, they don't. Uh, and so I think they do not have, like I mentioned, or the stomach to really go there. But I think as Americans, we need to start looking at some of these issues as national security issues to not be relying on foreign countries like Russia or China for him. Well, we'll be watching tonight, David Nicholas, see what the president comes up with in the State of the Union. Thanks so much, David. We'll see you again soon. The opening bell.